What's going on folks? Today we're going to be installing this cage that we have behind me. Uh, this is a six point roll cage from Maximum Motorsports and uh, this particular cage is configured with all the options. Um, I went ahead and went with the six point cage from Maximum Motorsports because this is pretty much the best bang that you can get for your buck. Um, as you see the, the cage pretty much comes assembled. Um, the door bars right here, uh, right here and uh, whatever you want to call those back bars, they pop off. The cage is assembled. You just pretty much put it inside the car, bolt everything down. You don't actually need any special tools. Um, we're going to be welding this thing together, but that's because that's the way I wanted to do it. But if you didn't have that, you could do that. Um, other cages that you buy, you can actually buy them in this configuration or whatever, um, but you're going to end up with a pile of pipes delivered to your front door, and you're not going to know what the heck to do with them and you're still going to have to go to a specialty shop to get them installed. They could probably have fabricated the cage for you for less. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at this cage real quick. So as you can see, these are the little base plates that are going to mount to the actual chassis points on the body. Um, I went ahead and actually painted the cage before uh, this awesome bronze color. Let me see. Yeah, you can't really see it that well, but the, uh, the finish on the cage is absolutely awesome. Um, another rattle can job, so if you want to see tutorials on that, just definitely click the link that's about to pop up. As you can see here, I have the cage configured with the diagonal bar here and the harness bar in the middle. Um, also, I have the low door bar configuration. So, uh, with the low door bars, this cage is actually not considered legal for uh, most types of competition. Uh, but, I wanted something that was functional, usable. I'm not going to be drag racing the car. I'm definitely not going to be 10 seconds where I'm going to have be required to have a cage. And I'm not going to be <laughs> drifting tandem drifts. So this works for me. It's going to still make the chassis stiffer. Um, and it's still going to provide an additional level of safety. And in the future, when I decide to uh, add a thicker ladder bar uh, that I can upgrade to later, um, you know, I'll be able to just add on to this cage as you see it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started and start pulling the interior out. Uh, the first thing that's gonna come out is gonna be this harness bar that you see behind me. I've already pulled the passenger side seat out. The goal for this right now for me is that I'm gonna pull out as little bit of interior as possible. Uh, maybe shoot myself in the foot with that, but uh, we'll see later on. I uh, just really don't feel like gutting this entire car. I think we can get away with just pulling out the minimum amount of stuff. So let's see how far we can get and start pulling these parts out. All right, folks, check it out. This is what I did not want to do, but we went ahead and did it. It actually wasn't so bad, but um, all of the inner panels in the rear are off of the car. We've got the car pretty much completely gutted on the back half, and uh, we're ready to slide the cage in and see what that looks like. Um, so far, it looks like we're gonna have to clean off the sound deadening material that's right here on top of these fender wells. And we're also going to jack the car up because there are panels underneath it that are going to need to be uh, bolted on as well. Hold up. <laughs> All right, check it out, folks. We don't have dry ice, so we actually like literally made ourselves a chisel to remove the uh, sound deadening. So if there's anything that you've learned from my videos, folks, buy yourself a Harbor Freight welder. <laughs> Do it. All right, so right now we've been chiseling off the sound deadening material. Um, we're trying to hit this side with the grinder after we chiseled some of it off, but the grinder's just making a mess and uh, it's just making a big mess, so. So we found out that acetone takes off the residue on this stuff pretty well. So we're rubbing it down on this side and he's wiping his side down. All right, folks, check this out. We've run into an issue. It's not a major issue. Um, as we're mocking up this cage here, um, we've got a giant hole here in the floorboard. And I found that because I just started peeling back this sound deadening material. 
and uh, the floor is completely rotted out in this area. So what we're going to end up doing is cutting out uh, like two feet right here. We're going to replace this floorboard and then we're going to have a nice base to weld this uh, door bar to and uh, then the car will be even better. So here we go. Alright folks, this is day two. We made a whole lot of progress yesterday, but we had to shut it down a little bit early because it got late and we just don't, didn't want to be making a whole lot of noise with the grinders and things like that um, because of the neighbors. So um, anyway, well, let me show you exactly what's going on here. Right now we've got four points bolted in. So as you see, they're bolted here up top and down underneath there is a plate. Uh, take very special care when you're doing the passenger side when you drill your holes if you're doing a bolt-in style cage um, All of your brake lines and fuel lines run right through this area and we didn't check and we just happened to miss them by sheer luck But we came right next to them. So be careful of that um, You won't see anything back here uh, We did the bolts pointed upwards into the car in order to have uh, more wheel clearance this particular setup doesn't have clearance issues, uh, but some setups do, and so you want to make sure you have as much clearance as possible. So the best thing to do is to put your bolts up from the fender well. Uh, let me see. What's left is to clean up this area here so that we can weld, replace the floor pan on that side, and that should be it. The cage will be installed at that point. So here we go. All right, so we've got everything bolted in, and this cage is actually 100% installed according to uh, what it's meant for, but we're actually gonna go ahead and weld it in, like I said. But um, as you can see, the Maximum Motorsports uh, fitment is outstanding. It fits really tight. If you stand back and look at it, that's how it fits in the doors. Um, hopefully I'm not speaking too early and my seats go in there okay, um, but some people tried to give this cage a bad rap, but as you can see, this thing has beautiful fitment. And Maximum Motorsports does not sponsor me, but if you guys would like to, by all means, send whatever you got. So we're going to go ahead and tack weld this thing in, and then there'll be a long journey of putting my interior back together. You good? So here it is, last look at the Maximum Motorsports cage, uh, the fitment, I definitely could not have asked for better fitment. Um, so as you can see, everything's in there. Uh, big shout out to Aleem right here. He's the big dog I call when I can't do it myself. <laughs> um, and if you take a look inside here, that's how the door bar falls right below the uh, door panel. So the fitment on this thing is absolutely wonderful. All right, folks, it's been a few days and I just started putting the interior back in. So I just got done test fitting this uh, inner side panel and I wanted to show you guys how I modified it in order to fit over top of the cage. So all I had to do really is just make a vertical cut right here in front of the seat belt hole up into the edge of the uh, speaker hole. Uh, from the looks of it, the uh, Maximum Motorsports bars may not interfere with the speaker. And if they do, it'll be minimal interference, but the bar is actually gonna hit right in this area right here. Uh, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of cutting right here. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that's gonna look like just yet. Um, and I'm also gonna end up making a custom speaker mount here so that I can have more speakers in my sound system. Uh, so inside the car, the back seats are installed. And uh, just one more look at the fitment of the cage. It's awesome fitment. That's how it looks with the back seats in there. All right, check it out. I decided to do a little bit more work on the Fox before I put this video out. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the fitment of the cage around the speaker grills. So in order to get your rear panels in with a Maximum Motorsports cage, all you have to do is just make a vertical cut straight down. Um, from your speaker grill box about you know maybe an inch over just go straight all the way down to the bottom and you can fit your side panel back in that way and as you can see it's not really going to interfere with where the stock speaker location is um, I went ahead and added in extra speakers just in case um, so it looks like I'm just gonna have an extra set of speakers in here and the sound is gonna be a little bit better 
So that's how it all comes together. And I just have to put my front seats in, finish putting the carpet down, and everything will be done interior-wise. All right, so once again, I'm signing off. That's going to be it. Thanks for checking out this video, folks.